Well, how many of you guys this morning have something that you are worrying about? Something that's been bothering you for a very, very long time. And you have been worrying about it so much, and you don't know what to do anymore. Raise your hand if you have something that you are worrying about. I know I have something that I'm worrying about this morning. But this morning, the passage was read already. I know there's a lot of us sitting here this morning worrying, even worrying about when we get home, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, is the world is going to stop, if it's going to stop raining a little bit so we could go out there and do a barbecue. We worry about tomorrow. Is it going to rain? Because I know a lot of us here want to barbecue tomorrow, right? I'm worrying about that too. Because <laughs> I want to be able to eat a lot of food tomorrow. But this morning, God is telling you, don't worry about these things because he will take care of it himself, because he's in control of tomorrow. So don't worry about it. If you pray, God will stop the rain so you can barbecue tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that good? Because I, I know a lot of us want to barbecue tomorrow. There's a short illustration that I want to use this morning before I get into the sermon. Anxiousness indicates a lack of trust in God, wisdom, and power, which cause us to worry, because we do worry a lot. There is a great poet by the name of Robert Frost from 1874 to 1963. He wrote, the reason why worry kills more people than work is because more people worry than work. <laughs> is, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that the truth? And, and, that, and that's serious. Seriously, worry has become an American pastime for many people. Worry has become so ingrained in the, pers in the personality that once the old worries are gone, the search for a new one. Isn't that something that we do every day? We were worrying about one thing, God take care of it, so we bring a new one to God that we want to worry about. They have become dependent on worry as a lens through which to view life. And they have forgotten any other way to live. But when I was reading that quote, I stop and think a lot about it because that's something that I've done so many times in the past myself where I worry so much. So I pray and I ask God to open doors for me. He opened that door and next thing I'm bringing something else to God. I'm worrying about something else. But this morning God is telling us not to be worried about anything. And the number one thing that we're going to talk about, Jesus uses the word worry six times, and he specifically emphasized don't worry three times. Jesus against high anxiety, and it is unhealthy to worry. Because worrying, it's a sin. We can say that. When you worry what you do, you're committing a sin without even knowing that. So that's the reason why God is telling us, do not worry. Because when we worry, we, we are sinning. But this morning, we don't want to focus a lot just on that. Due to the fact that, is it not life and body more important than food and clothing? Life and body are certainly more important than food and clothing. We find that in Romans 8, 32 also. Who provide for our life and our body? God does. God is powerful enough 
to create life, God also able to provide food and clothes to sustain for our life. Isn't God able to do everything that he promises? Because he, he makes that promise that he is able to take care of everything in this world because he creates everything in this world. So therefore, he's telling me, I'm going to talk to Wilson this morning. He's telling Wilson not to worry. So therefore, my job and my responsibility is not to worry. When we look at the birds of the air, are you not more valuable than they are? A, the birds are an example of God's ability to provide through God's providence working in nature. God provides for their needs. This does not mean they do not work for their needs. The birds are always busy gathering food, preparing nests, caring for the young ones. We are certainly more valuable to God than the birds, than the trees. A matter of fact, we are worrying all the time how and when God will deliver us and when we are going to find food to put on the table. But this morning, God tells me in telling you, you don't have to worry. He wants you to be worry-free. If there's anything that you can get from this sermon this morning, God is telling you not to worry. Because again, we're going to go back and say, because worry, it's a sin. Jesus promised us that he will meet all of our needs because he cares for us. Jesus also tells us not to worry about our life, what we are going to eat, drink, and what we are going to put on our bodies. He tells us that. He tells me not to worry. What about you this morning? What is it that you are worrying about so much that's stopping you from getting to the kingdom of God? That is stopping you from seeking God's kingdom first. Worry is when you cannot do something, but you don't leave it up to God to take care of it for you. Because a lot of us at times does that. We worry so much and we don't leave it up to God to take care of it. But God wants to tell you this morning, don't worry about yourself, but worry about me. God wants to tell you, if you leave it up to me, I will take care of it. Because when you worry, you basically saying that, God, I'm going to take care of it myself. That's what this is saying to you. When you cannot do something at time, you have to learn to leave it up to God to take care of it. Because we cannot take matters into our own hands. We cannot carry the weights by ourselves. We have to bring it up to God. Again, you are more valuable than the birds. Why? You were created in the image. You were redeemed by the blood of his son. Why then let concern over physical need distract you from what is really important in life? Imagine, God created me, Wilson, in his own image. Isn't that great? He created me in his own image. He created Pastor Brian in his own image. And every single one of you guys were created by God. That's the reason why he made me so handsome and look so good. <laughs> because he created me in his own image. The birds, yes, he created them. The trees, yes, he created them. But not like me. I'm good looking, <laughs> handsome, just like Pastor Brian and um, Dr. Hill, his buff, because he works out. <laughs> you know, he walks like a robot. 
Because, because he works out. So therefore, because God created us in his own image, why should we worry? Not only that he created us in his own image, and he's telling us not to worry, but Jesus also made a promise. He said that we will meet, he will meet all of our need because he cared for us. Jesus also tell us not to worry about our life, what we are going to eat or drink, what we are going to put on our bodies. And he also tells us one thing, that we cannot serve two masters at the same time. You can never serve two masters at the same time. You only can serve one person at a time. And the reason why he said that, we cannot serve money and God at the same time. It's, it's impossible. Because you only can do one thing at a time. And when we go and we consider the lilies, won't God provide for you also? Other examples of God's ability and willingness to provide, like we find in verse 6, like the birds in the air, look how they grow. We'll find any toil, whatever on their path, or any care bestowed on them by any human being. God is the only one that can do that for us. Not only that, there is two reasons God says that we shouldn't worry. Those two reasons, he tells us, first, the, the Gentiles uncovered eagerly seeking those things. In Jesus' time, the pagans were pursuing food and drink and clothing. The reason they were seeking those things is because they didn't know God. The pagans were tormented by worry because they believed that their future was in the hand of fate and fortune. Because us, the pagan, the unbelievers, the Gentiles, they didn't know God. So they had no one else to take care of them. So the only thing they had was seeking for food and clothes, seeking for things on their own. But this morning, since we are believers and we are men and women of God, God is telling you and me not to seek for food first, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The Gentiles didn't know God. So therefore, they had to search something. Someone had to feed them. So they look for food on their own. But due to the fact that you and I have God in our life, we don't need to seek for this thing on our own anymore because we have God in he ahead of us that's seeking for this thing for us. So therefore, when we're seeking those things, we have to remember that God is always in control. God is always in control. So if you go in your own, start seeking things in your own, basically you saying, God, you don't care for me. But God is not saying that. God does care for you this morning. I know there's a lot of things we, we worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. But guess what? The more you worry, the farther you stay away from God. It's just like going backwards or step out of time, a little bit out of time. It's in your step-by-step step when you're walking away from God. The more you worry, the more you stay away from God because you're going backwards. But God does not want us as believers to go backwards. He wants us to go forward because God don't go backwards. He don't go to the side. He go forward. So why not go forward with God? And the only way we're going to get forward with God is not for you and me not to worry. The second reason you shouldn't worry, 
Your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. We are his children, worried every day about whether he's going to feed and clothe us. How do you think this makes him feel as a father? As an earthly parent, imagine how you feel when your own children question your ability to provide for them. Imagine that. Imagine how would, you, how would I feel when Ahijah comes to me, which is my oldest, say, Dad, I'm hungry. And I say, I'm going to take care of you. But yet, I fail him. When, when Pastor Brian said, hey, Mark, I'm going to take care of you. But Pastor Brian forgets to take care of, of Mark. Pastor Brian forgets if Mark is hungry. Right? I'm seeing Mike up front. He forgets if his grandchildren are hungry. But God will never, ever forget about you, and he will never fail you. Because we depend on God as believers to take care of us. So therefore, we must depend on God at all times. Not to depend on the world, but depend on God. When you worry about saying, God, I don't know about you. When you worry so much, I'm not sure, God, if you care enough for me. I'm not sure you're going to provide for me. You are good for church on Sunday, but I'm not sure about you helping me, so I'm going to take care of myself. That's what a lot of Christians do these days. They say, God, since you don't want to take care of me, so I'm going to take care of it myself. But just know that God will take care of you. Don't worry, but be hopeful this morning. You leave everything up to God. Because God is always going to take care of you. But when we leave it up to God, we cannot tell God that I'm going to take care of it myself, God, because you're taking too long. There's time we say we're praying for certain things, and when God doesn't give it to us on time, what we do? We go our own ways. I'm guilty of that. I go my own way. But if we let God be God, if we let God take care of us, we won't have no worries because he made a promise. After providing those two reasons not to worry, Jesus commands, in 633, Jesus said, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. This is a present command. The word seek was used to describe the activity of a hunter who hide in the blind to hunt birds. I don't know how many hunters we have in here this morning who hunt birds or deers or goats. I'm sorry. He is hunting for food. Not just for sport, because people does do it at times for sport activities. He f his focus is whole mind on those birds. His eyes always look for them. He keeps his bow and arrow ready. The birds will be within the shooting range for only a moment. So he sees constantly alert. Just as bird hunter make birds the center of his attention. Because when you're hunting for food, when you're a hunter, either you're hunting for a deer or a bird, you have to be alert at all times. Because when that deer comes close, you have to be ready to shoot. Because that's your meal. You're taking that home to eat. You're taking it home to feed your family. When you go to Walmart, Publix, when Dixie, we see the meats. Sometimes the hunters hunt them for us because we can't go out there and hunt them. The birds that we eat. But this is just an illustration. Just like the hunters make the birds the center of their attention because they have to pay attention. Because if they don't pay attention, that bird is going to fly by they're not going to catch no food. Why not make God, kingdom, your top priority 
in your spiritual life? Why not make God the number one thing in your life? This means if you are to be worried about anything, it should be the affairs of God's kingdom. If there's anything that you're worrying about, it should be the affairs of God's kingdom. Jesus now moved from a command to a promise. He stated that if you fulfill the condition of seeking first God's kingdom and his righteousness, all these things, material necessity, will be added unto you. He's saying, 33b, if you seek God, kingdom first, everything that you pray for, everything that you call God upon, he will give it to you. Only one person can do that. Only God. And he goes far and says, God, kingdom, doesn't mean heaven has a place, but means that God reign has king. The king of God, not, not only God rules over the people, but include his victory over the enemies through Jesus Christ. To seek the kingdom of God is to actively receiving the eternal life that Jesus brought through prayer, studying his word, and living according to his precept. We saying that this morning, a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Hills, and I love that, mentioned prayer. How we cannot be babies when we are praying. As a matter of fact, she's feeding the baby right now with a bottle. Thank you. Perfect example. We cannot be babies in prayers when we pray to God. We have to go to God, not for 30 seconds when we go into bed and say, God, I'm going to bed, protect my family, protect my children, amen, and go to bed. That is not praying. I'm sorry to say it this morning. You have to spend time and quality time with God. For you to get closer to God, you have to understand God. And for you to understand God, you have to spend time with God. And after Dr. Hill comes, Pastor Brian come in and illustrate that we have to fast at time. The reason why we need to fast, not because we are seeking something for God, not because we are seeking for money, not because we are seeking for a fancy car, not because we are seeking for food and clothing, not because of a healthy job, because we want to get closer to God. For us to get closer to God, it requires for us to make a sacrifice out of our life. If we're not willing to make that sacrifice, there is no way you will be seeking the kingdom of God. I'm sorry to tell you that this morning. Because when you seek the kingdom of God, it requires a lot of sacrifice. And that sacrifice, it's your knees. That sacrifice is the word of God. You reading, you staying in the word of God at all times. A lot of us fast only when we are in need of something. But this morning, we have to go the extra mile. Seeking God's kingdom requires a lot, a lot of prayers. Seeking God's kingdom requires for us to remain in the word. Make God's will your number one priority. Seek first the kingdom of God. We must make the will of God the number one priority in our life. We do this by serving God instead of material things. Letting the lamp of our body be the eyes. That's what happens when you're seeking God. Because when we seek God, we get closer to God. I'm not saying that you're not going to have problems when you're seeking God, yes. And I can testify to that. The more you pray, the more problems come your way. The more challenges come your way. But if you remain, if you remain in prayer, you remain in the words, yes, trouble's going to come your way. Tribulation is going to come your way, but just remember that God will take care of you. God will take care of you. And we moved on. Today has enough trouble to worry about. Verse 34, we are not capable of handling tomorrow worries. We, are, we have no control over the future. And worrying about the future only distracts us from duties of the present. Today, problems are all that we have. We are capable of handling without becoming distracted. A lot of times, 
We try to worry about tomorrow when I know for a fact, me, I, I, I can't take care of tomorrow. You can't take care of tomorrow, but God can take care of tomorrow. There's a lot of us sitting here this morning, and we have been worrying and saying, I can take care of tomorrow. I will take care of tomorrow. But just remember, you are not able to take care of tomorrow. Only God is able to take care of tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself, mean by trusting God. We have to learn to trust God by doing God's will today, not tomorrow. Let your undivided attention be giving to seek God first in life. Make God's kingdom the number one priority in your life. Concern yourself with God's righteousness, not your richness. This morning, there's a lot of us. I know, to be honest, you might not see it, but I'm shaking like crazy. I was worried a lot. Trust me, I, I, I was. But great leader said, Pastor Brian called me and said, Wilson, are you worried? I said, yes, I am. Even this morning, I said, Pastor Brian, do you want to preach? <laughs> I had to ask. If he were to say yes, I said, thank you, God. <laughs> That's something I was worrying about. But when you leave it up to God, he takes care of it. But before we end, there's a few things that we would like to illustrate this morning. Jesus specifically limits his promise to those who obey. We're going to go back to 33a. Rather than a blanket promise, this is a conditional promise that applies to disciples who are sold out to Christ. Remember, the promise God made. He said not to worry about clothes, food, and everything. It's not for everyone. Just remember that. That applied to disciples who are sold out to Christian. Those committed to building their own temporary financial kingdom receive no such of promise. If you think you're in here to build your kingdom, to build a temporary financial kingdom, and we don't want to criticize and we don't want to judge because we know there's a lot of preachers out there, they're building their own financial kingdom to get rich. But I thank God at Hollywood Community, we don't do that. We seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness. And I, and I can testify to that because we see how we live our life and how God is taking us to another level. This promise, hope, this promise is hopeful upon seeking first God's kingdom. This is not a license for, for laziness. One element of seeking first God's kingdom in his righteousness is working. Disciples are promised one thing. Disciples are promised survival. Disciples are promised survival. We will always survive. God will always take care of Wilson. God will always take care of Pastor Brian, Dr. Hill, and everybody else that's in, in the building this morning that are believers. He will always take care of us, but not our Florence, because he wants us to work. He don't want us to be lazy as Christians. We cannot sit back and say, God, you are going to take care of me. I'm just going to stay in my bed, watch TV all day, play the video game all day, thinking God is going to take care of you. We have to work. His promise always fulfill. Does not God always provide for the need of his children throughout the world? When Christians seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, they will become world Christian. And he will meet the need of those in poverty in other parts of the world. God is, is not saying that there will never be anyone who starves. 
He didn't say that. But yet he made a promise that he will always take care of us. One last thing. The problem with worrying about tomorrow is you never run out of tomorrow. You must learn to live life one day at a time. God only gives you help you need for today. He does not give you tomorrow help today. So don't worry about what you are going to do tomorrow because when you get to tomorrow, God's grace will be there to meet you and give you what you need. Don't worry about tomorrow because you are not in control of tomorrow. God is in control of tomorrow. But tomorrow, tomorrow's agenda is in God's hand. I'm going to use a short illustration. Dr. Hills, please. A short illustration. And a lot of us at times don't even realize that. Tomorrow's agenda puts you over the weight limit. One in each arm, please. Have you ever tried to carry many bags from the grocery store? That's what we try to do, right? We go to the supermarket with our spouse, and um, there's 10 bags. I'm sure he does it, because I, I, I've done the same thing too. Try to carry everything at one time. Right? We do that, right, Dr. Hills? Because we don't want to go second time or third time. We want to be many men. Because when we carry them, thank you, what we do is like this. And we're struggling to go inside the room. We're struggling to get into the garage. Don't go yet, please. Okay? So what happened at times, we carry so much weight on ourselves due to the fact that we don't let God take care of it. This time when we come from the grocery store, it should have been 10 trips if we have 20 bags, one in each hand, maybe 20, 20 trips, maybe six, maybe five, depending how manly you are. But due to the fact that we try to be manly at times, and we have 20 bags in our hands, one for another four. Hopefully these are canned goods. So, <laughs> so, and hopefully they're not a jug of milk or orange juice. It happens to me before. I'm going to testify to that. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Let's give him a hand of applause. The reason why I use this illustration this morning is because there's a lesson. Don't carry too much baggage at once. Learn to make multiple trips instead of one. Jesus tell you to carry today bag today and make a fresh trip tomorrow. That's the lesson here. Yes, we are laughing but not understanding the concept to it. What do we do every day? We spill things all over. We try to carry 10 things at a time. And we walk and we try to run to put it down. The OJ fell. Oops. Or we break the eggs. The next morning we don't have breakfast. But God is telling Wilson this morning, I don't have to make one trip to God. I could go as many times as I can. This morning, I'm going to ask you a question. We're finished. What is it that you are worrying about this morning? Ask yourself that question. I want you to take a, a, just a few seconds of your time and say, God, if you don't know what you're worrying about, there's a man who knows exactly what you're worrying about. I'm sure some of us have more than one thing that we are worrying about. I have a lot that I'm worrying about this morning. There's a lot. But there's one thing that I need to know this morning is not to worry and let God take control of it. By the same guy, Robert Frost, he, he will, I love his comments. He said, one morning, death was walking into a city. 
when a man stopped him and asked what he was going to do today. <laughs> Death answered, I'm going into the city to kill 10,000 people. The man replied, that's terrible that you would kill 10,000 people. Death respond, taking people when their time has come is my job. Today, I have to get my 10,000. Later, as death was coming out of the city, the man met him again. He was very furious, mad, angry, frustrated. He wanted to kill death. You're going to ask me why. You told me this morning that you were going to kill only 10,000. But coming out of the city, 70,000 died. Today, death said, well, don't get mad at me. Don't kill me. I only took my 10,000. You know who took the rest? The man said, no, I don't know. Worried, kill the rest. That's not my quote. But I love the fact that when I was reading that, the man was very angry. Death made a promise that I'm going to take 10,000, and he did. But the man was so angry and frustrated when 70,000 was killed that morning. To tell you the truth, a lot of us are dying in America today is because of worry. A lot of people are dying today because we worry so much. And worry takes control of our lives. And by not letting God take control, again, we're only sending more and more and more. I hope this morning, by listening to this, you learn not to worry. Because preparing this sermon, it was not easy. For me, for me, due to the fact that there's a lot I'm worrying about. Number one thing I was worrying about that she don't give birth today. <laughs> I, was worrying, I was worrying about it. But when, like I said earlier, and Dr. Hill touched it, Pastor Brian touched it, and I'm sure uh, in the short video, Pastor Jose said something. He said at time when we fast, there's certain things we have to stay away from. At time when we prayed, there's certain things we have to stay away from. And a few of those I know it's very hard to do. But at times when you want to get closer to God, there's certain things you have to stay away from. The Facebook account, we spent an hour at a time just going through pictures. TV. We're just changing the channel just for no reason. Or sometimes we're talking on the phone and we're not saying anything. Sometimes we lay in the bed, we're just watching something that we shouldn't be watching. I know I'm a victim. But God is telling you this morning, if you want to get closer to me, you must seek first my kingdom and his righteousness, and he will take care of you and everything that you need. He will provide it for you. May God bless you.